Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Shout Out today. Today going to go out, see what things go out today, see if things are on sale. And there's actually one thing I definitely want to try and get today, you know, that came out, you know, from Criterion. So I should be able to get it at the Criterion sale going on at Barnes & Noble. I believe that sale goes on for another week or two. So hopefully though at the Barnes & Noble, you know, they got this one thing in. This is a movie that I always really liked. So, you know, hopefully they have that one. Other than that though, I believe there was like a bunch of different retail exclusive versions today of Ghost in the Shell. So definitely going to check out those ones as well. As well, at the end of this video, going to have some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things that I reviewed to talk about for you guys at the end of this video. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And next month, though, there's going to be a lot of cool stuff coming out. They just announced, which I'm so excited about. Hopefully, they you know put out the second movie. But they announced all these exclusives that are going to be at Best Buy. There's going to be like, um, I think it's going to be Problem Child, which I'm you know so amazing that that's finally going to come to Blu-ray, as well as like um, Bowfinger and a bunch of other ones that are you know going to be those only at Best Buy ones. But Problem Child, though, that's one that I've been waiting to have you know come out to Blu-ray forever. Hopefully, though, like I said, at some point they release the second movie. Because I love those movies just as much. For those, are, that's one though like I've been waiting for forever to, for them to announce, you know, a Blu-ray release of that one. Yeah, one of the big things we got today, you know, was Boss Baby, which I didn't get to see this one in theaters. Let me know if you guys have seen this one, how this one is. But it has inside of here, like, an exclusive, you know, only a Target, like, talking keychain thing inside of here. So that's kind of cool. Like, it says, like, it says six hilarious quotes from the movie. And that one's, you know, $24.99 for the Blu-ray of that one, you know, with that. So it's actually, it's the same price with, uh, you know, with or without that. So that's kind of cool. And I don't think there's any, you know, four, you know, there's a 4K one, but that one doesn't come with the keychain. But the other one, you know, the big thing that came out today, like I mentioned, you know, was Ghost in the Shell. And they have down here their edition of that. And that has in here an exclusive bonus disc with 40 minutes of uh, exclusive behind the scenes footage. But I really like this movie. This is one of those movies that really another one that didn't do that great, but really thought it was actually a really cool movie. I may be talking about this one though in detail at the end of this video. And then their uh, 4K edition of, is that, of that one is $29.99. Another one that released today as well, you know, was Unforgettable. And I might have a review of this one as well at the end of this video. And this was the other thing today as well. This movie gifted which I didn't get to see this one in theaters if you guys have seen this one too let me know how this one is I it sounded kind of interesting but like it's not one of those ones that I would like blind buy but like if you guys have watched this though let me know though how this one is into Walmart we go and Walmart has like an exclusive edition of Boss Babe with this different cover on it and it has you know 20 minutes of uh, extras but those extras though are only available on Vudu so that's how some of these releases are with certain ones you know you can only see the special features you know the special you know exclusive ones only as like a digital thing on Vudu itself other than that though their edition here of um, Ghost in the Shell I think this no this is the regular one I think the only one that they have that's exclusive so you know, some people always say it's like when I put them back wrong, it's very hard to put these back on these shelves sometimes. But they have, I think this is their exclusive thing here, I think. That Exxon, Exxon Flux movie, I believe. I never know how you say that movie, but I don't think it was that great of a film. But I think that's the exclusive thing to their edition of that one. And their version of the uh, 4K one is $25.96, and it's $26.96 for the Boss Baby 4K. This is another one of the movies that released today. This movie, um, Black Butterfly, with Antonio Banderas. I reviewed this one a week or so back, but really liked this movie. It kind of reminded me a little bit of, like, Misery. It was kind of a cool film. Other than that, though... I believe this movie was today, this one called Alien Arrival. I don't know a whole lot about this one, but I'm pretty sure this released today, as well as the other one today. This was this new Scooby-Doo movie, uh, Scooby-Doo uh, Beach Blowout. It's another one of the Scooby-Doo kind of Lego movies kind of things. And they have Unforgettable here as well. And that one is $22.96. And then Gifted is $19.96. But other than that, though, I believe these are all the main things that came out here today. And this past weekend, the only movie that I got to see was Valerian, The City of a Thousand Planets. Uh, you know, it's from Luke Besson, who directed, you know, The Fifth Element. This movie, though, it's a shame, though. It really, really didn't do well 
and all at the box office. I feel like this summer, there's been a lot of movies that have kind of like, you know, looked like or people thought were really going to do well and that have really not done well at all. And it's kind of a shame, though, I think, this one, because it really was a super stylized science fiction movie. You know, it's the same director who did The Fifth Element, which I thought was an amazing movie. You know, I always loved The Fifth Element. This one was not as cool as Fifth Element story-wise, and just like overall it wasn't as cool, but still really was a very cool futuristic science fiction movie which had amazing like the look to this movie and the colors and the characters and like they really thought out all this whole world this movie was set in. You know, it was based on some uh, graphic novels I believe from years back. I think they were French graphic novels, which I didn't know too much about them at all. But, you know, as a movie, though, I really, really like this one. Like I said, it's a shame, though, that no one really has seen it. It's probably not going to stay in theaters too long. Uh, if you guys saw the movie, let me know, you know, what you thought of it. Uh, you know, this coming weekend, though, I really can't wait to see Atomic Blonde. That looks like that's definitely going to be a pretty cool movie, though. But like I said, let me know, you know, what movies you saw this past weekend. Like, if you saw Valerian, what you guys thought of it as well. Into Barnes and Noble we go. And you know, like I said, you know, the 50% thing is going on. They do have the one thing I wanted to get, which is Lost in America. Other than that, though, I got most of the other Criterion stuff recently that I wanted. You know, because Ghost War was one of the other last releases that I definitely wanted to get. But I did get this one uh, a couple weeks back or a month or so back. But this is definitely one, though, I'm definitely going to get today. Yeah, so like I said, the one thing I got in there was, you know, Lost in America. I always really liked this movie. It's about a couple, you know, that kind of dropped everything in Barth, this RV, and were, you know, driving cross-country with it, and, like, everything was kind of going wrong and stuff. It was actually, I always thought this was actually a really fun movie. It's probably, like, one of my favorite of the Albert Brooks movies, but my other favorite one is Mother, which hopefully at some point that one gets a blu release as well. That movie was just, like, a really ridiculous movie with him moving in with his mother. But luckily enough, you know, they seem to have a whole bunch of copies of this one. They always try and push that like uh, thing where you know you join the club or something like that in there and you save an extra 20% off but I think it's like $20 or something to join it and it's you know it doesn't really make that much sense because I only really buy stuff in there you know during the Criterion sale other than that because like everything else Blu-ray wise is usually so much overpriced in there. Into Best Buy we go. And in here, though, they have the exclusive edition here of Ghost in the Shell. Really cool steelbook edition of this one. And they actually have a steelbook, you know, for the regular Blu-ray and a steelbook for the 4K one. A lot of times in here lately, they've only had, you know, the 4K steelbook edition ones. So the 4K one's $27.99, and then the regular steelbook is $21.99. But this is, like I said, is a really, really cool movie. Really like this one a lot. This one, though, seems everywhere to be a really good price, this Black Butterfly movie. I really, really like this movie. I feel like not everyone's gonna like totally dig it, but I thought it was a really pretty interesting movie. Other than that though, like I said, Gifted was one of the other things today. So we'll see over in the section too if there's anything different. But other than that over here, it doesn't look like there's anything really too much else different. And they don't seem to have any exclusive editions of Boss Baby. Like I said though, if you guys have seen that one, let me know how that one is. But don't really see anything else in here too different today. Like I said though, next week though, and the coming month, you know, there's a lot of different things coming out. Like those exclusive ones they're going to have in here for, you know, Problem Child and stuff. It's hopefully those ones are going to be not really difficult to find and I'm going to be able to find them in the store. Because a lot of times when those exclusive things come out, it's always kind of difficult and stuff and they don't always have them put out and stuff. Well, I was wrong. There actually is an exclusive thing here for Boss Baby, but it's not really an exclusive. It's weird. It's like a lunchbox thing, but it doesn't come with it already. You actually have to buy it for $9.99, I guess. It doesn't look like it's, in it's included. So it, it technically is something exclusive, but it's not included with it. So that's kind of weird because normally, like, if uh, you know, Walmart does an exclusive thing, the DVD or Blu-ray is, you know, with it included, but it seems like here you've got to buy it, at least as far as I can tell. Well, that's all for my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Shamra today. The only thing I got, though, was, you know, the Lost in America. That was the one thing I really wanted to get today. And like I was saying in there, there's so much stuff coming out next month. There's, like, some exclusive stuff at Walmart. Uh, and then like, those Best Buy ones of, you know, um, Prom Child and all those things. So definitely a lot of stuff to get next month. But like I always say, guys, if you enjoy these videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Now stay tuned now for a couple new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And the first one I got from Arrow Videos, a movie called Stormy Monday. This is one I had 
had never seen before. Really pretty interesting movie. Really love the artwork on this one. But it's a movie basically, though, um, you know, it stars Melanie Griffith, Tom Lee Jones, Sting, and Sean Bean. This is a really early Sean Bean film, too, for him. And this is a movie that's basically, though, about Tom Lee Jones' character who is kind of this, like, uh, guy who has kind of a lot of money and he's kind of like up to kind of no good and he works with political people and all these kind of things that he's up to and he's trying to buy out this club from under Sting you know because Sting runs this kind of jazz popular nightclub and he's kind of trying to buy it and take it over and he ends up hiring Sean Bean to kind of work for him you know Tommy Jones does to try and kind of get Sting out and kind of infiltrate the business and get rid of him and you know Sean Bean's character ends up falling in love with Melanie Griffith and it becomes this awkward thing because Melanie Griffith's character, you know, was seeing Tom Lee Jones and he kind of works for her and, and like kind of stuff like that. So it becomes this whole awkward situation between all of them and what's going on. And, you know, it, it comes to all these kind of issue, issues and situations going on. Uh, has on here, though, uh, you know, a new interview, a new commentary track on here with the director, as well as a video uh, appreciation here with uh, critic Neil Young. But a really, and also, it also has a, you know, then and now tour of the film's uh, filming locations. But a really interesting movie, and inside here too, it has a booklet with some facts and pictures and stuff like that about the film, as well as uh, reverse artwork on this one. But this is this definitely a very interesting old school film noir styled film here, uh, and it, it definitely too has a kind of feel a little bit to Body Double, just a little bit because it was made a little bit after that. Uh, the next one here from Arrow Video as well. This is from the um, Arrow Academy line. It's a movie called Terror, Terror in a Texas Town. This is one I had never seen before. This one is from 1958. This is basically, though, about these guys that uh, kind of like... Um, trying to buy out the land from this guy in this farm and he's kind of they're basically going around trying to get people out of out of their land and stuff and he ends up you know um hiring this gunman to kill the one's father because he won't sell the land and it's basically like a revenge film though because the person that was you know who was killed he kind of comes back to town and finds out what happens to his father and it's kind of him coming back there to get revenge on you know for who was responsible for killing his father and it's like him coming after him with this kind of like a whale harpoon fish thing that he comes after him with and it's like a it's a western type film but it's not like the typical kind of like shoot him out guns type western movie it doesn't really have much of that at all it's more just like with him with this thing coming after them and really kind of different kind of music as well for this kind of movie it was definitely a really interesting different take on a western movie very different for the time because like i said around that time it was mainly you know like stuff with guns and all that kind of like shootout scenes this was a very different kind of vibe film this has on here though a brand new 2k transfer in this one um, as well as um, an introduction by Peter Steinfeld author of Hollywood Westerns and the 1930s um, as well as a couple other featurettes on this one as well but definitely an interesting different kind of Western film uh, the next one here from Lion's Gate, and I saw this one in theaters as well, and I really kind of like this movie. It stars you know Emma Watson and Tom Hanks it's a movie called the circle and it's basically you know about a company that is kind of like, you know, becoming this huge company and Emma Watson's character ends up working for them. And it's all about like a, it's a social network kind of company, um, kind of like a Facebook, but it's kind of like even bigger than that to the point where like, everybody's using this and everyone's kind of connected and when she starts working there, Emma Watson's character they're all telling her like you've got to like make sure you get your profile on there and you've got to do this and you've got to update it on every single thing you do and you've got to like you know she works kind of tech support helping people and it's kind of her trying to work her way up into this company and it's all about though some stuff going on in the company that she kind of comes to find out about it's not really that great what they're doing like intrusion of privacy and she starts to kind of discover these things and it's kind of her like is she going to go with this and accept what's happening here or you know not do this and it's it's definitely a very interesting movie all about like the future of kind of where you know uh, social media and things like that could maybe go to one day um, Bill Paxson was in this movie right before he passed away he was really she he played uh, you know Emma Watson's character but I really like this movie and like it was like definitely a crazy take on the whole thing of social media and like what could happen and and like invasions of privacy and stuff like that has on here though uh, a bunch of different featurettes and making of on here as well as a tribute to uh, Bill Paxton but a really really I one of those movies too like I was really surprised with how much I liked this one uh, the next one from Lionsgate as well is a movie called The Lovers 
This is one I didn't know too much about, and this is um all has really different interesting music on this one as well, but it's basically though about this couple and they're kind of like um both of them are not really they you know they've been together for years, married for years, and they're not really getting along too much. They're not really both of them are cheating on each other and they both have these other relationships on the side that they're kind of trying to hide from each other. And like the one husband is always leaving, texting people, the the wife is up to the same thing, and they're all like every time they kind of trying to plan to do things together, then they get a text from the person that they're seeing going oh can you meet me tonight and then they you know things kind of become this huge mess between them and they're all kind of about to tell each other about what's going on but then it's like the the thing that the movie really is about is about them kind of having a relationship again with each other it's something kind of spurs them to have this kind of relationship and be kind of, it becomes their thing about seeing each other again and they kind of become obsessed with each other and that's really all you can say about this but it's basically though about a couple that are cheating and then they decide to kind of like almost make a game out of seeing each other again it's definitely an interesting thing about like a couple that's been married for years and going through all these problems and then like kind of going through this whole kind of relationship and get together again with each other and kind of making a thing out of it. And has on here though a feature out about the music on here um, as well as a making of and a commentary track with the director. Uh, the next one here from Paramount, this is the 4K release of this movie. I really love this movie. I know the review wise this movie got some mixed reviews but I thought this movie was totally a really amazing visual film. I saw you know the original film, uh, the original anime film. I didn't see the sequel and I know they had a TV series as well it's at some point I need to check those out but this is you know uh, Scarlett Johansson in Ghost in the Shell really love the cover on this one like with the reflection and everything but like I said this movie had a lot of like mixed opinions but I thought this was a great movie it definitely had like with the look to the the world was all it kind of reminded me of Blade Runner like they did an amazing job with the setting the the look and the tone to this film but it's basically about Scarlett Johansson's character who you know had died and was brought back to life they put her brain into the body of this robot robot and she kind of you know doesn't really have any of her memories and she works kind of for the police crime force as like the super cop that goes around and kind of hunts and you know takes out bad criminals and stuff and there's a bad criminal now that they're trying to find it's kind of like um going around and messing with the other robots and like putting like viruses on them and messing them all up and kind of turning them against them and that's essentially what it is and it's kind of her trying to track down the person responsible for all these bad things that are going on to robots and stuff around you know where the movie's set but it's, I don't know I thought this was just a really cool super visual movie I really like Scarlett Johansson in this role I just thought it was a really great movie uh, you know 4k though if you guys have 4k the movie looks outstanding in 4k and the big thing like I always say with 4k is the HDR which is the high dynamic range which is all like the picture and the contrast levels and so it's like this movie definitely really benefits for that because it's a very very colorful movie in the world and like the the backdrops and the setting that she goes through uh and also you know of course looks a lot sharper as well but really really cool movie has a whole bunch of different uh making ofs on here and featurettes on the movie but definitely i would recommend checking this guys out you know checking this one out and also like i said if you have 4k looks outstanding in 4k uh, the next one here, uh, Warner Brothers sent over a free copy of this one to check out. And I saw, I saw this one in theaters as well. It's a movie called Unforgettable, starring Rosario Dawson and Katherine Heigl. And Katherine Heigl was amazing in this. And she's, like, amazing in these kind of, like, crazy roles. And it's basically, though... Um, Katherine Heigl's ex-husband is now dating Rosario Dawson. They've been together and like they're been pretty seriously together. And Katherine Heigl is kind of like nuts and obsessive and like kind of thinking about the husband all the time and kind of can't get over the fact that he's gone. And she has become like totally crazy and is sort of spying on them and she's kind of trying to figure out anything that she can do to try and mess up the relationship and kind of turn the husband you know against Rosario Dawson so she can kind of hope of getting back with him again and she's like doing weird things and like sending weird texts and trying to, she's kind of trying to do all these crazy stuff like I said she's spying and it's just her playing this insane nuts character that like will kind of do anything it takes to try and get her husband back and turn her you know turn him against Rosario Dawson I think you know Captain Heigl like I said does is so good playing these kind of crazy characters she did that as well in one movie 
can't remember what it was when she like killed the one's husband, one that was like cheating or something like that. It was one a couple years back, but she always does a really good job in these kind of crazy roles. And has on here though a making of on here, a making of as well as a deleted scene and a commentary track with the director on this one. And the next one I just want to let you guys know is available now. Warner Bros. sent over a free copy of this one as well. And it's the complete and final season of Pretty Little Liars. So this is the seventh season of the show. This is one of the shows I had only occasionally watched this one here and there. But essentially the show that was about these girls that had done something bad in the past. And they all kind of were together. It kind of had like a sort of a... I know what you did last summer sort of vibe like someone knew something that they did and then like things were kind of happening to them and throughout the show they were kind of running into all these situations with like kidnapping and all the all these kind of crazy things and out there things happen with this show but this is like the complete you know in the, the complete final season of the show it has on here though a number of uh, featurettes on here as well as a special episode uh, a, 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 about a rap party as well as deleted scenes here but if you guys are fans of the show uh, the, you know the final season of this one is now available now the next one here, this is one I had always heard people talk about this show, and I had never seen it. And I kind of, after watching through like the, some of the episodes on this season, I was kind of like, I need to go back and watch some of these episodes. I don't know why I never watched it, because I kind of was like, like, li like liking this show. And this is the complete, uh, you know, the final season of the TV show Girls. And like, it's one of those shows I kind of thought I wasn't going to like at all. And then I actually kind of like this show. And it's about Lena Dunham's character and all of her friends. And Lena Dunham works as a writer. And she kind of, you know, was, was originally with Adam Driver. And then they kind of broke up. And then the one friend is with her, him now. But it's kind of her as a writer. Uh, the first episode was great, though, of her going to this, like, uh, writing an article about surfing. So she goes to this kind of island on a trip. And she doesn't like surfing. She doesn't like the beach. And she has all these kind of, like, weird problems. And uh, Riz Ahmed, who was from... Um, you know, Rogue One and the TV show uh, The Night Of. He's an amazing actor, but he's like the surf instructor and they kind of have a relationship together and it's all these weird stuff going on. But I don't know. I was really liking this show. Like I said, I don't know why... I never watched this show when it was on, you know, why throughout the years. But it is, like I said, this complete final season has on here, though, a uh, Goodbye to Girls, an extended cut version of the series finale on here, a commentary track with, um, you know, Lena Dunham, Judd Apatow, as well as um, some favorite episode moment feature on here. Uh, the next one from um, Blue Underground. This is a Dario Argento movie uh, from, uh, what, I don't remember what year this one was from, I think it was like 95. It's a movie called The Stentinel, Stentinel Syndrome, which is actually a real syndrome. They, they kind of people argue between if it's real or not. When people go to like art galleries and they see art, it kind of can make them like get into weird like trance light -like states and like pass out and all these kind of weird things. But they say that lots of people actually suffer from that, but no one really recognizes it as a real thing. But this is, you know, uh, stars uh, Azio Argento, uh, you know, his daughter in this one. And she also starred in his other movie, Trauma. But this was, um, basically, though, she plays a police detective who is going to try and track down this serial killer. And she's, he, she goes to kind of, I think it was... Italy or some I can't remember exactly where it was she goes to but there's this terrible like serial rapist that she's trying to track down but you know when she goes to this art gallery she ends up you know having that since you know syndrome having her she ends up passing out in there and like has these weird like dream like encounters and, and kind of like walk back into the past it's all these weird things that happen to her but she ends up actually finding that right in the beginning of the movie this this guy the serial killer and he ends up basically attacking her and terrible things happen to her from this guy and then it's kind of you know um, she but he lets her live and it's kind of the police are kind of trying to since he she actually saw him trying to get information from her you know trying to work together and try and find this guy but this guy is kind of always lurking around now and stalking her it's a really creepy movie really really great music you know a lot of the Argento movies for, mo for the most part uh, Goblin and Claudio Semente did the music but this one the music was done by um, you know Eno Marcione so it's, it's it's definitely a, it was a different kind of music, but he did amazing music in this. But has on here, though, a new commentary track with uh, Tom Harth, the author of um, So Deadly Perverse, as well as a new interview with Azio Argento, uh, new interviews with special effects artists. 
but you know um, just a really really cool movie and like I said it's it's the three disc set as well so it has the um, two blu-rays and then one DVD of this one the next one here from Severn Films is a movie called uh, Bag Boy Lover Boy this is one of those movies that's kind of in the style of something like the Greasy Strangler this is like one of those really amazing out there strange weird movies and this is definitely one of those really really weird movies and I loved it so much like I didn't know what I was going to think of it going into it but it like turned out to be amazing but this guy is this really peculiar odd guy who works at a hot dog stand and he's really weird and he has no luck with women at all he's always trying to talk to this one woman who's this actress and he's like obsessed with people he's just really nuts but this photographer guy comes by and it's one of those really like really full of himself photographer guys who's like oh yes and he's like taking everyone's pictures and acting like he's really famous and riding around in limousines and everything and he ends up taking pictures of the hot dog guy and he's and the guy's like why are you taking my picture and all this it's like this weird thing and he's like oh I, I gotta take your picture you're amazing and I want you to come back to my studio and I'm gonna photograph you and you're gonna be a big part of my new art series I'm gonna be doing and the guy's like oh I but I want to take pictures and he wants to be a photographer himself but he's like no no come on back you know and he luckily gets him to come back to him you know to a studio and he's taking these weird photos of him putting bags in women's heads and strangling them and these weird death pictures it's a movie that would be a great companion piece to the neon demon if you guys want to watch like the neon demon and then this movie or this one and then that or what it, it just has that fit to it but it's basically though this guy though wants to be a photographer himself and he gives reluctantly the photographer gives him this polaroid camera and he starts taking pictures and he starts taking these really twisted versions of the pictures and it goes into these really dark territories and really really out there movie love this one so much definitely guys give this one a chance this is like a real true cult film that I really feel like is going to live on it's just it was a really really out there movie uh, the next one here from um Monarch Home Entertainment, and I really feel like this company, especially with their horror movies, they really pick really cool horror movies, and like some ones that to me like live on, and this one was one of those ones, it's a movie called Nocturne, and I really like this movie a lot, and it's about um, these friends that are having like a party at the house, and um, this one girl comes over, and it's kind of a girl that they, they sort of know, but they don't really, she doesn't seem like they totally get along with her too much, and they end up having the idea, the one guy's like, let's try and talk to demons and spirits, and it's not like the normal way with like Ouija boards and stuff, the guy does it through these like playing cards, so he lays out the playing cards in this circle, and he starts asking them the questions and stuff, and of course though, when they do this, something really weird happens, and they hear this really weird noise, and it, essentially what the movie though is about, is like the one girl getting like strangely possessed by something, some kind of a spirit. It's not one of those movies where they kind of explain or overly explain stuff. You just kind of know that like the night is like turned terrible and they're all kind of like trapped in this house. And they were doing amazing things too with like the time frame of this movie and connecting things and stuff. I just found this movie to be such a creepy movie and there was like one scene too that I love when like when with the possessed when the one like blows on her finger and the one's fingers like turn into like they like die and stuff. I don't know. This was a really cool movie and I, it really surprised me with how cool this film was. I can't really say too much about this one but it was just like really really weird stuff happens to these people while they're trapped in this house and after they mess around with this not like I said not a Ouija board but all done through like these cards. Uh, the next one here from um, Vinegar Syndrome. This is one I saw years back. And it's the main actress is this, who's the star of this starred in that movie, April Fool's Day. And it's a movie called My Chauffeur. And this is from Vinegar Syndrome. And as usual, though, with Vinegar Syndrome, they do amazing work with their restoration. This has a new 2K transfer on this one. And, you know, the, the picture is amazing. They do such a good job cleaning up their films. This is basically, though, about, you know, um, Kate, you know Kate, Deborah Foreman, like I said, the actress who was from... Um, April Fool's Day, and she was also in um, the one that I somehow I never watched before, Valley Girl. She was in that film as well, but it's um she ends up getting a job working for this chauffeur company because she ends up getting hired. It's a company where it's all these men that work there and they all are kind of like, why has she been hired here? Because it's all these like kind of like snobby kind of men that drive around like rich people and stuff like that. And she ends up getting the job there and she's this kind of like real 80s kind of girl and they don't know what she's doing there. So it's kind of her going through the whole program of trying to get trained to be allowed to work there. And it's all these kind of weird encounters and she is also is mainly like a love story between her meeting 
meeting one of her one of the clients that she drives around but you know since she's someone that doesn't really have a lot of money and he does it's kind of like a weird type of relationship between them and the guy doesn't know if he can be with her because of that I really enjoyed this movie uh, it's from 1985 and has on here though um, uh, interview here with Deborah Foreman which was pretty cool they got her to talk about this one because she hasn't acted in a long time so it's cool to see her talking about this film as well as a commentary track on here with the production assistant isolated soundtrack TV spots behind the scenes gallery but and also has you know reversible artwork in here of this cover I always like this cover for this one as well but this is a pretty interesting movie like I feel like one of the 80s movies you don't hear about as much the next one here um, from Wild Eye Releasing is a movie called Asylum of Darkness. And this stars um, Tim, um, Tim Thomerson, Richard Hatch, who, Hatch, who you know, recently passed away from Battlestar Galactica, and Tiffany Shepis. And it's a movie called Asylum of Darkness. This is a pretty interesting movie. Uh, Jay Wolfell filmed this one. He filmed this one a couple of years back, and it's all shot on film. Because I could tell right away, because I watched the making of it as well, but I could tell this had a film look. So it's pretty cool. Because nowadays, you really don't see many horror movies at all shot on film. And it's basically though about this guy who ends up waking up in the insane asylum and he kind of doesn't have any idea how he got there and he's kind of confused and he really wants to get out of there and in there though there's all these kind of like really weird characters and really weird people and he manages to escape the place but as soon as he escapes though it's kind of like it's it's, he doesn't really know what's happening because like everywhere he's going he's running into these weird type people weird type entities and it's like the world outside is just as weird as it was inside of the insane asylum it's a really really out there odd film I really like this one a lot it's just like a really weird going through this weird world and all this weird stuff going on and has on here, though, deleted scenes, a featurette, and trailers on this one. And this next one here is from Wild Eye Releasing as well. It's a movie that stars um, Tom, you know, James Duvall you know, from Donnie Darko. And it's a movie um, called The Abduction of Jennifer Grayson. And this is basically, though, one of those movies about, like, um, when a woman, kind of a girl, gets kind of abducted by somebody, they sometimes, and this happens in real life, too, sometimes become, like, obsessed with their abductor and almost fall in love with them. And this is kind of that, it's basically what the film is about. Uh, James of all plays this guy who kidnaps this girl. And at the beginning of the movie, though, she's talking to the police because she had gotten away. And they're trying to get information from her. And he, she doesn't really seem like she's even you know that shaken up about you know what had happened and it's kind of almost seems sad that she's away and doesn't really want to say too much about James Duvall but about you know what had happened but they kind of start to get information from her and she starts to kind of talk about what had happened but essentially though it's a movie though about James Duvall as this guy who kidnaps this girl and then her kind of like what she goes to and all this terrible stuff. But then she's also kind of starts to have like a thing for him and stuff. It's definitely an interesting movie. Uh, you know, I always love James of all as well. He did a really good job in this one playing the you know person that abducted the girl. This one here from um, MVD. And this was an interesting found footage movie. It's a bunch of different segments all together. It was kind of like all these tapes of all these really weird stuff all done in kind of like, you know, like I said, found footage styles. It's a movie called Jack Hunter's Paranoia, t Paranoia Tapes. And in the, the opening to this was some crazy real footage, too, about, like, real, like, um, tragic events and bad things that had happened and deaths and stuff like that. And it kind of goes th from, you know, talking about these found footage tapes. Like, I think it's like... 10 tapes or something then it leads into this guy who had found all these reels of film and VHS tapes and then it's kind of going and like watching these tapes and they're all like you know really freaky weird stuff that happens that kind of tie in to the you know because like since they played those real ones they kind of made it like and there was a good segue to going through them the real stuff to the found footage tapes to kind of make it have that same kind of feel but it's just some really really creepy um found footage tapes that you know you the guy is watching through I thought this one was actually pretty good. The the stuff in the beginning, too, like I said, too, really creeped me out. It kind of reminded me of, like, Unsolved Mystery, one of those really creepy, real stuff, and they're telling, like, a real story. Uh, the next one here from MVD as well is a movie called uh, The Glass Coffin. This is about this woman who's an actress who ends up, she's in a, um, she's in a, um, limousine going to a film kind of uh, event where they're going to be honoring her with this award. 
And she's going there, and like um, when she's inside of the, um, you know, the limousine, something ends up happening all of a sudden, and she starts hearing like a really weird person talking to her, like almost like the Saul kind of voice in the limousine. And she's like, "What's going on?" And you see like this footage of her from one of her films that would have, uh, you know, that they one of her big films, and she ends up basically trapped inside this limousine with this voice kind of like telling her to do these things and at first she doesn't believe that it's real and thinks someone's like pulling a prank on her but it's somebody is messing with her and it's kind of her in there going through these really weird things and terrible things that she's being told to say and do at the same time she's trying to figure out you know who the person is talking to her and why they want to do this to her but a really pretty interesting one here like I said this one is called The Glass Coffin and then the last one here from um, Epic Pictures it's a movie called The Day of Reckoning it's a movie that set it was 15 years before uh, something had happened in these weird type of like um, bat kind of winged serpents come out of the ground and you know came out of the ground from hell to kind of take over the world and kill everybody but um, they end up you know, a number of people end up surviving and all these kind of creatures go back into the ground. And this is, you know, years later, you know, 15 years later, uh, it's a group of the people, who, you know, who all survive and the world has kind of been put back together again. Um, and they're kind of believing that these things might be coming back. And of course, you know, they do come back. And it's about like a group of these friends that are trying to, sign, and a family trying to survive from these creatures and kind of like, where are they going to hide? Where are they going to go? And it's a movie that was originally for um, Sci-Fi Channel and has on here, uh, Barbara Crompton is in this one as well. And it's another one of those ones, too, that kind of has that sort of Day of the Dead vibe because they're kind of hiding in this one building in one portion of the movie. But kind of a cool one. The um, the creatures, though, you know, they're not the greatest effects on the creatures, but it kind of adds to the movie just kind of giving, like, a fun feel. Like I said, though, this one is uh, the Day of Reckoning. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.